Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchard and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything is falling apart Yeah You try to do your best But only God knows That you've given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for Two show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff, and we're making this show all the way from capital of Honduras, taking Sucalpa. We arrived today invited by Dr. Mario Pinel, and Dr. Marcos Garay, both executives of the Honduran National Dental College. And they've been very involved. The dentists of the country are very concerned about the families. And they got involved with the Honduran National Police, the Honduran Ministry of Security, and together decided to put this event. And what happened is a friend of mine, who's a famous retired Harlem Globetrotter, Robert Z. Hunter. Uh, he said to me, let's go do some more basketball drug education events. And so we're sitting here in the Capitol with four guys who have just flown down from Chicago, from New York, okay? And they're here with us, and they're gonna play some ball in the next few days here in the Capitol, in a major arena, in San Pedro Sula, in another major arena. And so we want to avail you of why they did this, why they're here. Okay, it's more than just basketball. And over to my left, we've got Zion, we've got Linnell, we've got Chris, and we've got Brandon. And we'll have more tomorrow. But for tonight, we're going to start with this show. And what I want to do is first I'll start out, uh, you know, with Zion. Since she's from Chicago and I'm from New York, so Brandon and I... Have to be courteous, let you guys start first. So tell the viewers, first of all, is you know, I know you love to play ball, but why did you decide to take such a long trip and come down here? Just like what you said. Thank you. Yeah, it's just like what you said, it's more than just basketball. We're here just to play for the fans, give them the, the entertainment of the game, and then. And so let me ask you a question. Since you were a kid, did you always want to play basketball? When I was a kid, um, so I started playing basketball when I was about two years old. And I didn't like it at first. But then until I got into high school, that's when I started following um, the, the passion for it. And then I started to work very hard, too. And then that's when I started to love, love the game more. And then, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And let me ask you a question, because you've got – this is the program we're doing down here. It's in Spanish. You can see it's called in Spanish, La Verdad Sobre las Drogas, which in English is the truth about drugs. So what motivated you to support this program with playing basketball down here in Honduras? Yeah, so I have a really, I'm really, I'm really against drugs. And I think we should really like change our habits of really taking care of our bodies. Like we should not really do drugs at all. Like we should not like smoke weed. We should, we should don't do marijuana. We should, we should take care of our bodies, eat healthy and just, just make sure that, that, uh, that, that you, that you, that you, that you stay healthy. Absolutely. You know, and next to me, also from Chicago, if you want to pass the mic, Zion, 
and we'll give it to Linnell. So Linnell, like you look like like Zion, somebody who's always been in sports. Were you always in basketball, or how did this happen for you? Well, as a kid, I played football at first. But then I just fell in love with the game at the age of eight years old, basketball. So ever since then, I just took it where it takes me. It takes me around the world. It helped me feed my family. And I just got a lot of love for the game. Beautiful. And so now how did you meet Bobby Hunter? Well, I met him through Phil. Phil um, had a couple runs. This is Phil Gary? Yeah, Phil Gary. Had a he, he, run, he runs some kind of. Doesn't, doesn't Phil run some kind of sports education program? Or is that what he does? Yeah he, yeah, he actually do a very good job what he does. So he get a group of guys from around the city, around the world, and we all just come out to a gym and just showcase our talent. He have a couple guys, a couple coaches come, right. come watching, uh -huh. just showcase us, our game. Okay, so that's so what happened is then Phil Gary introduced you to Robert Hunter. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. Okay. And so how was your flight down here today? Man, I didn't even go to sleep last night. It was very tiring. So I slept the whole ride. But as to what I seen, it was like, it was a smooth ride. It was a pretty good view outside the um, window of the plane. So it was just great. Beautiful. Well, you know, I'm really happy that you're here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you pass me that, I'm going to get over here to Chris. And, Chris, you're from Chicago too, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, so how does your story start with basketball? Were you a football first? Were you always basketball? Well, um, I played basketball track and um, football in high school. Okay. Um, but uh, my love, my passion was mainly for basketball. You know, I seen myself like every year was kind of, you know, uh, progressing it. So I decided to stick with it. And this is why I'm here. One of the reasons why I'm here today. Okay. And you're what, about 6'6"? Six, six, yep, 6'6". Six, 6'6", six. Six, six. okay. So when you played football, what position did you play? Yeah, I mean, at defensive end. Ooh. Yep, defensive end. Wow. <laughs> You're like Strahan. <laughs> Michael Strahan. Who was, who was your idol in football? Um, Honestly, I didn't love it like that, but I would say I had fun, so I didn't really look up to anybody. Okay. I just decided to really just focus in on, you know, making the best, like, effort, like, every time I play, uh, play, play football. Right. Mm -hmm. So, really, it's more basketball for you. Absolutely. Okay, who, now who, who are your heroes? I want to say hero because we had so many unbelievable athletes in, in NBA and pro sports, Harlem Globetrotters. Who, who are your heroes? Within basketball? Yeah, like your role models. Okay. I would say um, LeBron James. Right. Uh, that's one person for sure. Um, also Kobe Bryant. And then it's more so about like the mentality that he had. So like watching like some of his videos and how he honestly prepared for games, how it translated to life. How do you mean? Uh, Tell so, me. So when it, when it comes to just like you know, staying motivated, staying right. hungry, staying consistent. Those right. are all of the things that needs to transfer into life. You know, if you want to, like, be successful. So, like, that's what I really learned from that. You know, it's amazing. Um, as I talk to you, even though looks-wise you look so different than Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. but it's funny because as you were talking, and I know people told you that, you almost have his mannerisms or something. It's very interesting that I can see. I, I, I see I do that myself sometimes with people that I emulate yeah. and look up to. And I go, oh, you know, I'm acting like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Kobe was definitely uh, an inspiration to a lot of people. Okay. And now how did you meet the guy who's brought you all down here, Robert Hunter, the Globetrotter? Well, like like Linnell said, to uh, Phil, Phil Gary. Phil Gary again. So, yep. So okay. Phil Gary has you know, been very tremendous in my life. You know, he's the reason why I'm still playing basketball. Um, but, you know, the, the dedication he has to the game, uh, just kind of help me, you know, stay consistent and then just stay motivated as well. I got you. And so tell us a little bit, because it seems like this guy is quite a figure in the Chicago area. Tell us a little bit about Phil Gary, because, I mean, the viewers should know about this. He's not here today, but you know what? We want to do something in recognizing him because our world needs to recognize people. So Phil Gary, you know, out in Chicago, when this video comes out, we want to make sure everyone around the world knows what you've been doing. And for all of the other Phil Garys who are out there, because I know there's a bunch of them out there, and, uh, you know, I think there's another in Chicago who does books over Balls Revin Fellows, I think, also, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but tell us a little bit about Phil Gary. Yeah, I mean, so Phil, like I said, has been a focal point, and he's been, you know, training, you know, teaching uh, people from adolescent stage to adult life, mm -hmm. um, just how to be, you know, consistent on the basketball court, and then also how to have that mindset outside of basketball. Um, I just think he's like another father figure in my life because right. I lost my father. 
Um, but at the same token, he just kind of took me in, at the, and then he just want to see me, you know, succeed. Wow. Okay. Well, you know what? It's uh, amazing with what you've gone through, and now you're here. And I saw you out there before with that little guy yeah. from Honduras, and like you were being amazing with him. And kind of understand more of why now. And uh, so let me ask you a question: What drove you, aside from basketball, mm -hmm. to come all the way to Honduras? And do this basketball drug-free world education, you know, event with the national police, the dentist. Why did you decide to do that? What is it you see in Chicago and the world that you'd like to see change? Well, mainly just how we treat one another. You know, that's you know that's the first thing. Uh, you know, it's a, there's a lot of jealousy that I just feel that needs to be uh, eliminated. You know, when it comes to you know the success of others, you know, wanting to honestly you know see each other succeed. Sometimes we need that support from each other, but that's what we kind of lack. And outside of that, um, one of my friends that I used to go to school with, uh, he has a mental illness now because okay. because due to drugs, you know. So I would say, you know, it's really important to just kind of like stay healthy. Of course, you know, um, try to eliminate drugs if you do them occasionally, but try not to make it a habit. That'd be the main thing. Absolutely, and you know, for for a friend of yours who has that problem because of drugs, for those of you watching, there's a very innovative program that actually does uh, rehabilitation with sauna, exercise, vitamins, and science has been finding out that the drugs get into the fatty tissues of the body. Absolutely. And so what happens is then that person who is drug addict has so much that even though they try, the drugs come out and they, they have a real problem with withdrawal. But there's a, pro there's a program that came out called Narcanon, like Alanon, this one's called Narcanon. And the good thing about it is it does that but the person doesn't end up at the end of it, like on methadone or suboxone or some other medicine, they end up drug free with a chance at life again. So, you know, there you have something for your friend out there in Chicago. And um, so what message, because you're here in Honduras, would you want to give to those people who are going to be watching this show all over the world? Uh, what's the message you want to give to them on what has to happen? Um, I would say, Mainly just don't take life for granted. Um, stay active, stay proactive in anything that you do. Uh, just keep God first. Beautiful. And now, you know what? Now we showed that New York has got a lot of heart. We're very caring people. Brandon, you and I just stayed quiet here. And we let all the Chicago guys go first, you know? Yeah. But now, uh -huh. tell us a little bit about you. How did you start in ball? Um, at first, I tried playing baseball. I wasn't. I wasn't really good. I wasn't good at baseball, so I tried something else, and it was basketball. And I took took a liking to the way I was progressing in the game. So I just kept working, and I fell in love with the work. So I just kept playing basketball. Beautiful. Well, I think you got natural size, right? But how tall? Oh are you? yeah, and then I grew to six nine. So <laughs> that was a big plus. It's amazing, right? Yeah. So originally, like when you were around 13, how tall were you? Around 13, I was I was around average size. I was I remember maybe about maybe not average, but I was like five eight, five nine. I was I I remember standing in the back of the line in class. That's that's the most I remember. Okay. You know when they measure by height, stood in the back. Yeah. Okay, and you know, I wanted to know. So, how did you meet uh, Robert Hunter? Robert, I first met him this weekend on the plane, but I think he saw me play from a coach who coached me in Vegas. And am I right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Coach coached me in Vegas, and I guess he told Robert about me. Right. And here we are. Beautiful. And so is your goal to like play professional or? Uh, I've played some. I played in Portugal, Ecuador, and um, some semi-pro in New York. But my, my goal is to keep playing, keep playing professional. Yep. Beautiful. And so, you know, what? since you have that and that's your goal, right? Why did you take the time from something that you want, but you're down here for Honduras and for the world doing something differently. What I think that's something so important to the people out there watching, you know, because we have so much technology in this world, but sometimes we're losing sight of humanity. So why, why are you down here? Um, I'm here to 
spread awareness and to entertain and give the people from Honduras something they never seen. You know, they, you know, uh, when I when I walk around out here, they just so surprised about how my height, and I don't I don't realize how big that is in my daily life. But when I come here, it's like I get to sh I sh I I acknowledge that I realize how big of a person I actually am. Well, you know, it's going to be some game tomorrow uh, at seven p.m. And so I you know I want to ask all you guys now. Because um, I know we were teasing about this before, but it's really, a, I think, a goal of the whole group here is that uh, you guys want to kind of see this go throughout the world. Is that true? Any, any of you can answer. It makes no difference. All of us can answer. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, so like what we're doing right now, it seems like it's a, a goal of all of you to really have this thing take off and, and to really make an effect everywhere. Go ahead, and you can take the mic, so, go ahead. So, I'm gonna say this for all of us. I wanna say that we all here, just because we're a group of we're a group, a group of young men from around the world, Chicago, New York. We just here just to make history. This is history in the making right here, all of us together. So we just here to just, to spread, spread our love and show people what we can do. Absolutely. You know what? Uh, I think it, what you're saying makes so much sense because a lot of times, I think in the world, people just kind of go go with the flow, right? Mm -hmm. Again, this is just history right here. It start it start right here in Honduras right now. This is Good. history. And let me ask you a question because I see you know, and I noticed the first time I saw you, you're very like focused. Like, how do you what, what is it that like I see you so intentioned? And um, you, you have that. What is it that drives you? Like, how, I'd like you to share with the viewers, because a lot of people out there always talk about, you know, I want energy, or I want to be able to finish something. Why don't you share with them how you do that? Actually, I'm just a, I'm a chill, laid back guy. But when I'm like involved with people, meeting new people, I, gotta, I bring the energy. I, I, like showing, I like showing a lot of love and what I can do. Well, that's beautiful. Now, Zion, because you've got a great name, man. you got Zion, and uh, it's like a really religious, historical name. Um, what do you feel that you'd like to see in our world? I'd like to see a lot of, a lot of change in the world, because, like, I know we're out, we're out here trying to make a lot of history. So... So uh, basically, basketball. That's 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 definitely like the first thing to 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 really um, to do it right there. And plus, just like what Linnell said, we young men we love the game of basketball, and we just want to showcase the 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 world out there. And. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's, that's that. Well, that makes you know absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, we were on a plane when we got to the airport, right? And we got on the national police plane. How'd that feel to you? Be up on that plane, national police plane, and describe man. to them about <laughs> yeah, the feeling. Man, that was definitely a new experience for me. I've never rode in a plane like that before. When you when you get in that plane, it felt like just like what we all said. It felt like we was all going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> including me I, 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 I gotta be honest with you when I was about 16 four of my friends back in Connecticut you know we were guys like you guys are you know <laughs> you know a normal guy and you know we ended up doing something and we got brought home to our homes and you know it wasn't horrible everything was good but it happens so go ahead so keep going so how was that experience of the airplane and really I'm not too big into airplanes to be honest with you I was, I was, I was, I was feeling like really motion sickness, like when I got in that plane. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but, but, but yeah. If if you ever like want to take that plane, like take the national um, 
uh, Policia plane. Just, just be ready, just, just for anything, really. <laughs> it was about, you know, because I, I was I, myself, I was wondering because it's not a jet, and you know, it's not a passenger plane. So we were just kind of in there, only ten of us in there, and it was a small plane, and the pilots were right there, and. Uh, you know, for me, it was a similar experience to um, amazing and like what would happen, you know? So like, tell me, how, for you, Chris, what'd you feel like on that plane? Uh, a, little, a little about what Zion said. Okay. I would say since we were already on two planes before that, I did have a little bit of motion sickness. Okay. But, I mean, outside of that, like I said, it was a new experience. Um, so I just kind of embraced it. Okay. Uh, uh, a little sightseeing of just me being close to the window. And just me seeing the horizon and seeing all of the different things. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And so now, you know, Brandon, uh, we were talking uh, the other day, and you had mentioned to me that you were in European leagues and, uh, and, and doing things like that. And then um, we've been talking about this idea going forward. So what would you like to say to the people out there about, supporting ideas like this, not only for this group, but maybe for other groups that are out there. Why do you think it's important that this happens more and more in the world? Um, it's important because we need a, uh, well, children coming up, they need a, they need something to look at and put their focus into and we promoting the right thing. So if they grab a, grab interest in what we're doing, they, they they wouldn't have time to put their focus in stuff that's not needed. This is a this is something positive and and something that you can progress in rather than wasting your time doing other unneeded activities, unnecessary activities. Absolutely. And now tomorrow, uh, you know, Robert Hunter is an original globe trotter, and there's a uh, another guy. That's a uh, original globe trotter coming tomorrow, and then there's a uh, you know an NBA player, former NBA player is coming tomorrow. So and I'll open this up to all you guys. Uh, how does you, for you feeling as you know, like uh, initial budding pro trotters, right, and working with Bobby Hunter and going in that direction, right? How does it feel for you to have these guys who have already made it here with you tomorrow? Uh, it's inspiring, and it's a it's a great example and a great thing for me to see because they're in a place that I would want to be later in life. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, in fact, one of them is the first Dominican in the NBA, which is Felipe Lopez. So, yeah, I think he'd be more than happy to share because he actually does a program like Bobby and I are doing in Dominican Republic. And what's interesting for the viewers out there so that you can maybe do it in your own country, your own town, your own city, is they're working with the police. So maybe that's a no-brainer. They're also working with the uh, dentists in the area, which I happen to be a dentist, you know. And so it brings the community together, you know. It gives So each one does what they do best and make a team out of it. And uh, for you, Chris, what, what is it going to be like to have these guys here tomorrow with you? It's going to be exciting. <clears throat> it's going to be something to remember. Um, and just to, you know, maybe even, you know, if I have, like, any questions, you know, to be able to, like, ask them, you know, how, how are they able to get through, like, certain things or to get to that point that they're at now. Right. Um, but it'll definitely be something that's, that's, that's memorable for me. That's right. And that there's one guy, I think, that, that had a problem getting on the plane going to be here tomorrow, right? And what, what is his name? Because we want to make sure we include him in this broadcast. What's his name? Daquan Jackson. Daquan Jackson. Okay, so so Daquan is going to be here tomorrow morning. Right. Okay, so you know whoever want, one of you want to speak for him or say something for Daquan is or you know because he's not here, he's not getting a chance, but we don't want to overlook him because he will be part of the team. So any of you want to say anything about Daquan or for Daquan Yes. I'll take you back off. <laughs> okay. Well, I think three point shooter. I was gonna say that. I was like gonna say the Quan is a very good three-point shooter. He could dribble the ball, like he got it like on a string, like a yo-yo. He's a nice guard, and just be ready for him. That's all I gotta say. Just be ready for him. 
Yeah, I, I, th I think I saw a video of him. He missed. And I was watching him, and I said, wait a second. D did they put Dale Ellis in here and substitute him, make believe he's the quantist? I said, this guy just, everything he was shooting was going in. And man got the touch. I tell, I tell you what, I was, I was very impressed when I watched the video, and you guys will get a chance to watch that video because we're going to put this with the show, and we've got to make sure that each one of you does. If we didn't, I think you're all in that video, but we want to make sure you're in the video so that for this TV excerpt that we're going to do, that they can see what you guys do. I don't know. I mean, we're kind of sitting here. I'm in the middle of you, so I can maybe, you know, interrupt it a little bit or something, but I can get out of the way. You guys want to do any kind of funny act with a ball or something here or pass it around or I'm gonna say and I, I guess I could, I could sing a little bit do 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 our flight was at 6 a.m. We had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. We is tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you know what? I think on that note, that's a great ending. And, uh, you know, I tell you all we can do. We don't have to do the ball. Why don't we do We just do the song. How's that? You know that song, right? The Globetrotter song? Robert Hunter could even chime in to lead us with it if he wanted to. <laughs> okay, well, that's the beauty of a live show. And, you know, life is live. So let's take that and, like they, they say, you know, uh, run with it. So we won't do the song, but we will do this, is what final message do you want to give the viewers out there about Sports, avoiding drugs, and doing something that you really want in life that's positive. Go ahead, you go first. Okay, well, sports, I would say, don't give up. Don't give up. Chase your dream. Drugs, it's a bad use. It can really mess up the inside of your body. Okay, Chris, here you go. Right, go, go ahead, Kiwanis. Go ahead, Zion. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say just follow your passion. Like, it doesn't even have to be sports. You could also be like a doctor, lawyer, anything. Just follow your passion. And plus, um, just like just like what we're saying about avoiding drugs, like like avoid it a lot because you 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 will mess up a lot of opportunities that you'll have over that. So it's really it's, it's not it's not really worth it. Okay, so we'll pass it over to Chris. Go ahead. Uh, to conclude, I would just say, uh, be your authentic self. Don't be easily influenced by other people. Um, just really, you know, dig deep and find, you know, find whatever uh, you feel could be your your success story. Okay, and Brandon, what would you like to leave a final message for the viewers? I would just say, try to, no matter what you're doing, just try to better yourself every day. Just try to get 1% better every day. Good. And so I want to do one last thing on this show, because there's someone who would have been here and who would have loved to participate in this event, who was a great globetrotter. Unfortunately, he passed away, uh, but he would be out there dribbling. Larry Gator Rivers, and Gator was a great man. Very kind man, unbelievable athlete. He could run unbelievably, and unfortunately, he passed away. But, you know, let's, before we end the show off, let's maybe do a few seconds here. We'll be quiet in remembrance of Globetrotter Gator Rivers. We'll see you on the next episode, and have fun out there. Like they said, pursue your dreams, don't give up. Until the next time. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything is falling apart. 
try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet.